I wish this was vodka. It's not. My world is a world of infinite disappointments. Hi guys, it's Leanne and I am here today with my tops and my bottoms for the month. And this one's going to get a little opinionated, like they don't all get a little bit opinionated. <coughs> get yourself a beverage, get comfy. I'm not comfy, I'm sitting on the floor because it's the only place with natural light. But hey, we're rolling with it. These are the sacrifices that we make to bitch about books on the internet. Well, I'm not going to bitch about them all, by definition, you know, like, tops and bottoms. Okay, let's get that out of the way. My first top for the month, because let's start on a high note, was a book that I, I was anticipating enjoying very much, and I didn't just enjoy it very much, I freaking loved it. It just blew me out of the water no pun intended, and that is Kilman Creek by Rachel Kane. So this is book two of the Stillhouse Lake series. There are currently three which are released and there is one more. I don't know whether it's the final one. I hope it's the final one. But I don't know whether it's the final one or whether it is just a, a continuation of the series, but that one comes out next year, so I guess we'll find out. I've talked about this series before and obviously it's a bit difficult to discuss this book in lots of detail because it is the second book in a series but just in case you haven't had me just drill it into your cranium that you must read this book I will tell you a little bit about the first one Still House Lake. This one starts with Gwen and her two young children. They are driving home and as they turn into their road they discover that there is a lot of police, their fire crews, their neighbours are out it's crazy and they find that somebody has taken the sharp turn into their road too quickly and has finally done the thing that Gina was worried about her entire life and has just ploughed into her garage. Hello, are you good? Hi. Oh, thank you. There we go. Mutual kisses. So Gwen, oh hello. There are so many people and they're all here. That's you sat on him, Nimbus. You literally sat on him. He's so rude. Your brother is so rude. I know, I know. And then no spoilers because it's on the blurb of every one of the backs of the books. But Gwen then discovers that her husband is a serial killer. A quite prolific serial killer. They are put in witness protection. They're relocated and they need to start again. And then as if all of that wasn't bad enough, a body turns up in the lake in front of her new home, killed in pretty much exactly the same style as her husband's previous kills. So let me just tell you the things that I love about this series. I absolutely love that I went on a journey from really not liking Gina whose name is changed to Gwen, so that that's at least convenient for you to remember. I went on a journey from being really like, oh, you're suffocating your children and you're not making the right choices, to realising that I had been manipulated into the position of the people who were on the internet and who were judging her but didn't know her experience, to then really getting to know her and rooting for her. I love every single character in these books. Every single character that is introduced just is quite... Um, fully fleshed out very quickly. I felt like I knew a lot about them very, very quickly. Even the little side characters in this one had a really good personality and I think that's because Rachel Cain comes from writing urban fantasy where that's something that happens a lot in the genre. Often urban fantasy has many, many, many characters who are recurring and slide in and out and so you have to make them all different from each other and all recognisable instantly and she's really, really good at that. Um, I really love Lanny and Connor who are the two kids in this. The two of them and their experience with their illusion of their father and their current struggles with living with their mother, all of it, it's just very authentic. I felt at all times as if I was reading a true experience and for a thriller that is just sometimes quite difficult to achieve. Sometimes I'm quite aware that I'm reading a thriller, that I'm like, I'm thumbing through the lives of people who don't actually exist and thank God because what they're going through is awful. But with this one, I felt like I knew this family. I felt like I knew their struggles and I wanted to protect them. And that is just, that's epic. I just never knew what was going to happen. And in the second book, 
a thing happens which literally made me sit up and go what the bleepity bleep bleep sweary word just happened there and I read a lot of thrillers so that's quite difficult to do these days and it happened and I was happy I was very happy I'm very happy which unfortunately leads me on to my first bottom of the month so I went straight from reading Stillhouse Lake to reading Kilman Creek and then I went straight from Kilman Creek into Wolf Hunter River because I was desperate to keep following these characters and what I thought Rachel Kane was going to do was follow this cast of characters several years down the line. I, I thought they were going to have vastly moved on with their lives, that the, the massive things that had happened in the plot previously were going to be like things that we felt the shockwaves from and the repercussions for for years to come. And instead, the book starts four months after the original story which I felt like was a choice and I'm not entirely sure it was a choice that I liked so I, I, I you know I, I gritted my teeth because I was like I love these characters and then at the beginning we get like a weird disconnected introduction from a character who is great and the introduction was great and I was like oh my god keep telling me about this character and I forgot that I was reading another book in this series and then suddenly we're back with Gina slash Gwen and I was like I don't know why we're here and then Gina slash Gwen makes uh one of those decisions that makes you immediately go that uh that that wouldn't that wouldn't have happened that's not in character at all why did she do that that's against everything she's ever done in all of the other books and I understand where Rachel Kane was going with it she was trying to do that she was trying to give you a, a shock look this character has done this and now it's had these repercussions but it just felt artificial it felt like we were building drama out of nothing it felt like she'd kind of run out and went right where am I going with it now it's incredibly difficult to create a thriller series that isn't based on a detective and I feel like that's really where she got stuck because in the third book it essentially turns into Gina slash Gwen's private detective agency and I really was I was out of the story a few choices were made with the other characters in terms of romance things that I just didn't find in character and also the actual plot Whereas the plot had been so surprising and so unique, it was now suddenly very samey, very constructed. It felt very artificial. It didn't feel, it just didn't feel authentic and I didn't like it at all. And the only reason that I finished reading it was because Kirsty and I were reading it for our podcast to Death by the Books which you can find out more about below if you're new here because there's a few of you hi and my advice if you're going to read this series is read book one and read book two and take them as a duology and just take your head cannon and go to town with it and just pretend that the other book doesn't exist. Every day I change my mind whether I'm like, yeah, I'll read the fourth book just to see what happens. And then I'm like, no, no, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I've cancelled my pre-order. I think I'm done. Again, this is not the vodka you were looking for. My next top is mm, maybe a bit predictable, but I don't freaking care because it was literally amazing. It was literally amazing and I loved it because it was amazing. Have I said amazing enough? Amazing. It was amazing. And that is Memento, which is the first book in the Aurora Cycle by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I only mix up the surnames when I say it quickly. Don't drag me. I'm only kidding. You can totally drag me in the comments. I'm here for that. This was a much anticipated release. You guys all know that I love the Illuminae Files like with the burning passion of a thousand suns. They're amazing, they are plot filled, but they're very character focused. They are definitely like page turners and a new thing every second. And I was really worried that this one wasn't gonna kinda reach those lofty heights because it was a lot to live up to, especially because 
Amy and Jade decided not to make this one a mixed media book although there are at the start of each chapter there is a little sort of um, a page that looks like this which is kind of a throwback to illuminate but it's much more of a traditional story. I miss the mixed media but at the same time they've kind of done that and I I don't want it to become a gimmicky thing. This is about Tyler and he attends Aurora Academy which is an elite academy which trains space cadets mainly for peacekeeping and humanitarian aid missions. Top of his class, he is the golden boy, he is the Scott Summers of this academy. He can do no wrong and then he does something very wrong. Very very wrong. He goes out the night before the selection of the squads that they're going to be in for the rest of their time working for Aurora Academy uh, because he goes into an interdimensional weird thing and finds this person and this person may or may not be the catalyst for an interdimensional war thing that has been gonna happen for a really long time. You know, standard Jay and Amy stuff. And so when Tyler gets back, he gets left with the absolute dregs of the academy. He gets left with the people that nobody else wants and they're all on his team and he just has to make the best of it. Is this a good enough fix, Grant? No, I can't do it. My face doesn't lie if, if I don't like if I don't like something that just is it's there. It's just there. Certain talents I have never mastered. And I think that that's the absolute star act, maybe pun intended of this book is that the cast is so strong. Jay and Amy have managed to go from two perspectives in each book in their last books to going to multiple perspectives and there are, I was worried when I picked this one up, there were multiple perspectives. We get the perspective of literally everybody who's on the squad and so it's, it can be quite jarring right at first but after that I totally settled into it. I had sympathy for everybody. I didn't feel like I was very pleased with some of the characters screen time. There definitely wasn't enough of each character but I also understand that if there was going to be more of each character there would be another like 200 pages on the end of this book and it's already pretty long. It's actually, I think this hits the 400 page mark. Let me check. Uh, yeah, 470. That's hits 470. Wow, I didn't remember that. Hello, person who has just messaged me. I am filming. Shh. There, I definitely wanted more of some characters, and there has been a few controversial things in this about diversity. And given that the book explicitly states that this is set in a world where all different kinds of love are acceptable in all different you know interspecies romances and that kind of thing and that it's it's clear that gay straight you know bi demi ace etc etc all of the lgbtqia plus 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 spectrum is accepted and normal and not something that anybody really questions and then everybody's hella straight and all of the pairings that pair up are hella straight and so that was a little bit frustrating and there's also another character in it who is hinted at having like learning difficulties but it's never explicitly said but that's where we're maybe going with it and I was a bit uncomfortable with that once it was pointed out to me. I didn't actually see it at the time, I don't know what, you know, once I, it was pointed out I was like oh interesting, okay I didn't pick up on that but I'm a bit uncomfortable that that is where that's going now now that it's in my head. I like my vague vague vagueness I'm trying not to give any of this away that might be actually plot spoilery so but for all those concerns I really loved this it's on my top for a reason I was grinning from ear to ear through most of this yeah Jay and Amy can do the almost no wrong. Now the whole idea of these videos is that I talk about my tops and bottoms and I don't talk about anything in between because I don't usually have anything to say about the in-between books. So I'm calling this one a bottom because I had tons of issues with it. However, I am I am gonna say it's probably more of a middle book. But I wanted to talk about it because this is the second time I've read this one. So the book that I'm talking about is Columbine by Dave Cullen. 
Uh, obviously, from here on in, I'm going to be discussing Columbine and what happened there. So if you feel at all sensitive to that and you, you don't want to listen to it, this is the timestamp that you can skip to and uh, I, will, I will stop talking about it. So the first time that I read this one, I actually read it in physical form and I was really underwhelmed by it. I read this one after I read Sue Klebold's book A Mother's Reckoning. Sue is the mother of Dylan Klebold who was one half of the pair of kids who went in that day with guns and killed fellow classmates and teachers and Sue's story just ate me up, it blew me away, I couldn't process how sad it all was, it just left me with such a why, just it was so pointless, everything that happened was just so pointless and so many people just were injured by it and it was just, it was sad, it was just sad. However, when I picked this one up I had really high expectations for it last time and I think that was partly why it just didn't hit the mark for me. It's been on my mind since I read it and I just couldn't stop thinking that I needed to pick it up again and that I maybe needed to give it a chance on audiobook. The narrator for it is fabulous, he does a wonderful job for the most part and obviously all of these accounts are pulled from interviews so would it be interesting to just read a book full of interviews? I think yeah it probably would be but obviously maybe not as compelling shall we say than the way that Dave Cullen went about this one but it just left me with an icky feeling. I kind of felt like I was exploiting people's feelings reading this. I kind of... I, d I mean I know it's won a lot of awards and I know that lots of people love it but I wonder if part of the reason that so many people love it is because it is really the only definitive true crime book about Columbine. There are many books out there about Columbine but none of them had the access that Dave Cullen had or the sort of completeness that Dave Cullen had in this one. So I think it both goes for and against him in that respect. I feel a lot like he should have just stuck with telling what happened rather than trying to show it and I know that that is not always as immersive for a reader but I argue that I don't really want to be immersed in this experience I just want to learn about it. I don't know. I do think though despite all of that that it's important to note that this one is very good at putting the victims front and centre. One of the things that I look for a lot when I read true crime is that the victims are really the important thing is that the people that we are hearing about are the victims. I get frustrated with books that tell a gruesome story of a horrible murder and instead of seeking to understand it and how the the perpetrator got to that point and why they did it and what was going on around them at the time and how it affected their victims and their victims' families it instead just focuses on the gory details and the crazy things that was going on in the mind of the serial killers and things and, and that just that just annoys me a lot because have we not learned from glorifying these people that it's probably not a good idea. So that was my uh, quite insistent tops and bottoms for the month. As always if you guys have read any of these books and if you have opinions because we love, I feel like I should do the thing that Ursula does in Disney when she's like body language opinions we love them probably shouldn't do that face it's not that flattering stop this I don't know what any of that was anyhow if you have read any of these books and you would like to tell me what you think of them please leave that in the comments below if you are going to be picking up or not picking up any of these books because I have influenced you. Also please tell me about that in the comments below and I will be back very soon with another weird way of picking my TBR that I'm going to regret. Bye! Done that vodka. Hmm. Maybe it could be though. I've done all my jobs for the day. 4.20 in the afternoon but I'm an adult. I can do what I want.